So the oil seal that I was talking about needing to replace is the one that you can see right there in the groove. What's going on YouTube? I want to welcome you back to the channel. In today's video, we're actually going to be working on a little oil leak that I've developed on the Africa Twin. I noticed after going on some rides that after it had been sitting there for a little bit that I had a little puddle of oil right underneath the motorcycle. When I went to take the skid plate off, I noticed that where it was coming from was out of the little weep hole that you can see right here that is actually between the oil pump and water pump. Inside, or the way that actually works is your oil pump actually has a little drive coming off of it to turn your water pump and there's actually a little oil seal that goes between those two to keep the oil into your oil pump and not leaking into your water pump or coming out of the little weep hole. So all of the parts that you're going to need to do this fix and also the, all of the tools that you're going to need is going to be in the description below but also as I use them I'm going to actually be popping them up like I've been doing here in the last couple of how-to videos. So let's get started. The first thing that you're going to need to do in order to get started is to remove your skid plate. Depending on your application, it may vary. I believe I've got a stock skid plate, but I could be wrong. My skid plate is mounted with two 6 mm Allen bolts that go through right here. And on the bottom side, back here toward the back where your center sand is mounted, you'll actually have another 12 millimeter bolt that goes through right here. And then on your side, you actually have the last one that is mounted right here with a 12 millimeter bolt. Once you have your skid plate off, the next thing you're going to need to do is actually to drain all your fluids. You're going to need to drain both your water and your oil. So in order to remove your actual water from your water pump, you're actually going to need to take this 10 millimeter bolt out right here so that it will drain all the water out. Now that most of the water and coolant is out of the bike, let's go ahead and put our drain plug back in. That way, even though we're, we will probably still have some fluid come out when we take the water pump off, we got the majority of it out and we won't make quite a mess. Now that we have the drain plug put back in our water pump, we can actually drain our engine oil. And this right here is where your engine oil is. And it's going to be a 17 millimeter bolt. Like our coolant, we got most of the oil out, so we can go ahead and put our plug back in. That way we're not leaking any more oil. Now that we have most of the oil and coolant removed from the system, the next thing we're going to do is start working on at the actual removal of the water pump. And the first thing you're going to need to do is right here on the front side of your water pump, we need to remove the two hoses. So in order to remove this outside, hose from the water pump let's remove this eight millimeter bolt right here and it'll allow us to pull it out of the water pump because there may be some residual water still left in the system make sure you have your drain pan underneath this hose and then we can remove this. You may need a little screwdriver or a flathead screwdriver in order to pull, release the seal. All right, now that we have that loose, we can actually work on this inside hose and this one doesn't have a, any type of O-ring or anything holding the pipe on. So just use a regular JIS Phillips or you can use a nut driver and I'm going to pop that size up here with it. And now that we have the hose clamp loose, we can actually wiggle it off just like you would any other hose.
All right, after fighting with this hose for just a few minutes, I'm actually gonna go ahead and remove the oil lines and I'll show you why in just a second. Let me break in real quick because I was actually trying to remove the water pump body and I'm gonna come across an issue that the book really doesn't talk about. In order to remove the actual water pump body, you need to go ahead and remove the cover that is over your front sprocket. It'll make it a lot easier actually in this process that we're gonna be talking about to go ahead and remove it now. Let's talk about how to remove this front cover. The first thing you need to do in order to remove the cover is we need to remove the bolt that is holding our gear shifter onto the spline. Kind of make a mental note of kind of the location of it. That way when you're putting it back on, you can put it back on in the same location. All right, once you have the bolt out, you should be able to just kind of pull it out just barely. So now that we got the gear shifter removed, we can remove the two eight millimeter bolts that are holding our cover on. You got one of them that is sitting right up here. And then normally you would have another one right down here, but I had removed it trying to get the housing out. So let's go ahead and remove this top one that we have left. Now you should be able to remove your cover. So when we remove the oil lines, we'll actually be able to get into that inside hose a little easier because we'll be able to move the metal hose out here to the outside so like I said, it'll give us access and a little easier in removing that hose. So the first thing I'm gonna to need to do in order to remove the oil lines is to remove the two five millimeter Allen bolts, one right there, and then one down here on the bottom, which are holding a E-clip that's holding your two oil lines that's going to your oil cooler. All right, now that we have the two hoses removed from our E-clip, we can actually remove this 10 millimeter bolt right here that's holding the hoses close to the motor. All right, let's remove our other 10 millimeter bolt right here. All right, now that both of those bolts are out and we have our two bolts out of our E-clip, we should be able to just barely pull it out and they should come loose. And there's your E-clip. There's one hose. And then there's your other hose. Now that we have the outside hose off, we can actually reach our hand in here and get to the inside hose a lot easier. Just like so. Now that we have all four hoses that obstruct us from removing the water pump, we can actually remove the four bolts that mount our water pump. You have one bolt that is sitting right here next to the drain plug. You got this bolt right here. You also have a bolt right behind here. And then you have the final fourth bolt right here. All four of these bolts are 10 millimeter. The two bolts on top, you should be able to remove with a socket and extension 
but these two on the bottom, because of clearance issues, you'll probably have to use a wrench. So this one right here, we're gonna to have to leave in, like I was talking about just a minute ago, because of clearance with this frame rail. So as you can see, we actually have two different size bolts. You have some long ones and you have some short ones. Your short ones are, one of them's right here on this one, and then the other one's right here in the upper right corner. And then your long one is right here on this one. And I'm going to assume that this is going to be a long one as well. Now that we have the three bolts out on our water pump and this one right here loose, we should be able to just pull the water pump and it should come off. So on the water pump cover, I actually had to use a little screwdriver to pry the cover off of the actual water pump right there because of this little dial pin right here. Uh, the book does say to remember where the dial pins are, but I'm going to leave this one in here until I have to remove it when I'm cleaning up everything. All right, now that we got the cover off, the book does say that you may have to use a little pry bar or something in order to pull the back off because of the two seals that we were talking about replacing. So with even pressure, just, you know, kind of go back and forth back here. So I was trying to remove the water pump housing and I'll show you what I was doing here in just a second, but the book says to use a little flathead screwdriver or some type of pry bar and kind of gently work the actual water pump housing back and forth. As I was doing that, I kind of noticed that your front sprocket cover right here had a bolt right here that is actually going through, I think, through the actual housing. So let's remove this eight millimeter bolt. So what I'm doing is a while ago this, you know, you had no gap here where this bottom right mounting bolt was. And so I kind of wiggled it enough to get enough room in here. And I'm just using a screwdriver just like this and kind of pulling it back and forth to pull it out. All right, now that we've jumped back where we were before I broke in earlier, we should be able to easily remove our water pump using the same procedure that I was just talking about. And like I was thinking, it come right out. So the oil cell that I was talking about needing to replace is the one that you can see right there in the groove. The, it was allowing the oil to come out of the wheat pole right there that was letting me know that it needed to be changed. So there's the wheat pole that you need to look for in order to see if that oil seal is actually loose. Also, I noticed that when I was looking at the book that there's another seal that is right in here that is keeping the water in from leaking into the same wheat pole. So it kind of has a two seal design with just one wheat pole. So as you can see through the process, I've got a lot of cleaning up that I'm gonna do in order to get all the old oil and everything else so that if something started to happen again, I'd be able to know that it's not from this same procedure. So let me get everything cleaned up and I'll be back with you after we get that done. 
So it's been a few days since I took the water pump out and it took me several, several hours to uh, do some cleaning. And let me show you what it looks like after I've done all the cleaning. All right, so that's what it looks like after I did all the cleaning right behind where the water pump is and everything. Um, as you can see, I still got a little bit more cleaning to do, but that's gonna be in a future video uh, because I do have a new front sprocket and chain and I'm gonna replace those two. And so whenever I get this off, I'll actually try to clean up the rest of this back behind here. But this uh, oil that was right back in here was caked on really good. So it took me, like I've said, several days to get it clean. So when I went to get the oil seal out back behind here, what I did was I used a little screwdriver right here and kind of reached in here behind here and pried in there enough to where I could kind of pull the seal out a little bit. And I used a pair of needle nose pliers to kind of grab it to pull the rest of the way out. Um, we're also gonna change the other O-rings that you got, one of them's right here, and you have one of them right here that I've got as well. Um, if it's one of those that if your bike getting leaking that bad and these O-rings are still good, you don't necessarily have to replace them. But I've never replaced these O-rings and it's very possible that these O-rings are from 1993. So just to be on the safe side, let's go ahead and replace all these O-rings. So the first one that we're going to do is actually going to be our oil seal. And that's the part number right there that I'm also going to display right up here. And it's one of those that when you go to put it on, add you just a little bit of grease to the outside to kind of help it slide on a little better. And then you want to make sure that the opening is facing the outside, just like so. And you're going to press it in till it's flush with the housing. Just like so. So your next O-ring is going to be that part number right there. And that O-ring goes right here. In order to get this O-ring off, just use a little pick or something and just kind of reach underneath it. Kind of grab it like I did right there and just roll it out of the groove. And then just pull it all the way off. All right, kind of like we did the uh, oil seal, let's put a little bit of grease around the O-ring. And then put it on there and just kind of work it down. Let it slide down till it gets to the groove and then just kind of barely push it in and let it go in there. And what you want to do is you want to look at the O-ring and also make sure that it's not rolled. Otherwise, when you go to put it in, you're going to tear your O-ring. So the other O-ring that's going right here is going to be the one that goes between your front housing and your back housing. And this is the part number right here. And as you can see, it's kind of molded in a certain way so that you can put it in this, the groove right here. So make sure that after you put some grease on it, make sure that you're putting it in the groove the way that it's molded. All right, now that we've got the grease on here, let's lay it in the groove and line it all up. And the grease will also help it when you put the front cover on it, it'll actually help it stay in place while you put a screw in here to hold everything together. All right, now that I got the cup front cover back off, we should be able to slide it in there without any problems. Once again, making sure we're not catching any electrical hoses or anything. All right, once you get to a certain point, you're going to have to start turning your propeller because if you'll remember, the back had the groove and inside the motor, you got the other groove so that it kind of meets up like it's supposed to. So it kind of started going in, as you can see, the propeller's not really wanting to turn, so I know it's in the groove. There we go. So once again, making sure that our O-ring is in the groove. All right, so before we can put our cover back on, 
we need to put the bolt in right here because it's a little long it's gonna be a long one and you're not gonna have enough room once you have the front cover onto the water pump to get it between the rail and the front cover so make sure you got that kind of slid in there All right, make sure that your O-ring hadn't fallen out of the groove. And we'll have to be careful of our wire right here to make sure it's not getting between the front and rear cover. Or rear, make sure it's not getting between the front and rear housing. Just like so now that we got the front cover on there we can actually rotate it and line it up with the rear mounting locations and just kind of hand tighten them all before we you know tighten them all the way up and remember that the one down here next to your drain plug is going to be this one that we tried to put in earlier that's got the little brass washer all right and this one right here is going to be a short one and then you're going to have another long one over here on this end All right, like I always do, we're gonna crisscross tighten these up. We're gonna go from hit this one right here to this one down here to this one, and then finally to that one right there. And once again, all of these are 10 millimeter bolts. Okay, and got that one snugged up. And remember that these two on the bottom, you're gonna have to actually use a wrench because of the clearance. All right, that one's snugged up. And then we can tighten our other one up here. And then finally, the one that's right there. Now that we got them all snug, we can actually go ahead and kind of tighten these up. There's no torque spec I found, but you're not going to want to over tighten it enough to where you strip out the holes. And still using the crisscross pattern. All right, so let's put our rear hose on, and it's the one that is not metal. What's it's on there all the way, tighten it up, tighten up the hose clamp. All right, so let's replace this O-ring right here, and that's the part number for this O-ring. And make sure that you put a little bit of grease on it. All right, so if you look at the O-ring, it's kind of beveled in a way that you got a small side and a large side. Now, the way I'm gonna put it on, because I believe this is 100% correct, is it's gonna go on with the large side to the outside with the small side going in, facing in toward the water pump. 
the way that works is that this is going to actually seal against your water pump. So once you got it slid on, we're going to push it in to the water pump. All right, now that we have it into the water pump, we're going to secure it with this eight millimeter screw that goes into the slot right here. So once again, there's no torque specs. So make sure you snug it up, but don't go too much. All right, now we're ready for our O-rings that go onto your oil lines right here for the oil cooler. And right here is the part number. All right, once you have the O-rings on there, set it inside your frame rail with the bottom one first, and then align it with your oil filter housing. Just like that. And then align your top one the same way. Just like so. And let's go ahead and put our two bolts in right here to hold them into place. And these are going to be 10 millimeter. All right, once you have these two tight, we can put our little E-clip right here onto the oil filter housing to hold our oil cooler to the oil filter housing. And the way you put it in is you're gonna to wanna to put the bottom side in first and then rotate it in, just like this. Once you have those in, we can put our bolts in here to hold it to the housing. Once you have it kind of started, you can actually tighten it up with a five millimeter Allen. And let's use our other side to tighten it up. And then finish up tightening our top. All right, now we are able to put our front sprocket cover back on. All right, now that we got our cover back on there, we can put our bolts in, and these are gonna be eight millimeter bolts. You got one up here, and then you're gonna have one right down here. Hopefully you can see right behind your oil line. Let's put our gear shifter back on and just kind of, if you kind of remember where you had it, you know, put it back in the same location or if you need to, after you put it on, it's not in the right location, just unscrew your bolt, take it out and then adjust it to where you need it. Push it all the way on and then slide your bolt back in and 
and slide it out just a little bit till it gets in that groove that's between your splines. Let's tighten this back up and it's going to be a 10 millimeter bolt. All right, let's put our drain plug back in. Make sure you don't forget your brass or copper washer. And then tighten it up. With a 10 millimeter. All right, and while we're down here, let's make sure that we've got our drain plug tight because I don't remember whether I tightened it up all the way when I had it put, put it back in. Looks like I did. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and replace my oil filter and I'm gonna put the part number for the Wix oil filter right up here. All right, so we're time to start filling everything back up. It calls on your oil for 2.6 liters or about two and three quarters quarts of oil. So let's put it in. So the book calls for about two liters of coolant and I've got about half a gallon right here, which is close to two, uh, two liters. So let's uh, put the rest of this in there, or as much as it will take before it starts flowing out. All right, so there you go. We got the water pump back in, and hopefully I won't have any leaks. Um, I'm gonna let it sit here and run for a little bit. And then once I get it to operating temperature, you know, check the fluids and everything. And then we'll have to go on a ride and just kind of let it sit there for a little bit after I get done just to see if it's actually leaking still. So I don't believe it's going to be. Um, I think that I did a pretty good job, at, you know, making sure that all the seals and everything, the O-rings and stuff like that were put in without getting pinched or anything. So I think we're going to be in pretty good shape. But uh, if you like this video, please give me a big thumbs up and subscribe down below. And y'all let me know what y'all thought about my how-to. Y'all let me know if there's something that I should have done that y'all saw that I didn't do. Um, y'all let me know about that in the comments below as I much appreciate that. And uh, you know, share those with some people that may have one of these Africa twins that may have a little oil leak that they don't know about. So until the next video, always take this thing group and I'll see y'all then.